What is up, Waffle Gang? I do hope you're well. My name is Mark, and today we're covering some more r slash am I the butthole. If you'd like to skip the initial waffle, timestamps are in the description and along the timeline below. But if you are new here, please consider hitting that like, that subscribe, and maybe that notification bell too. Like I always say, it makes a huge, huge difference, and you're doing this, so thank you so, so much. And thank you for just taking the time out of your day to be here, you know, it really does mean the world to me. Taking a part of your life and dedicating it to this channel is absolutely amazing of you to do so. So thank you so, so much. And with that being said, let's just crack on with today's stories. Much love, guys. Now, I have got a couple of updates from previous stories as well, so I will be linking those down in the pinned comments so you can catch up with those. We have read them previously in other videos, but I actually linked the stories to Reddit too. So our first story is from a throwaway account. Am I the arsehole for not making it known I understand Spanish to my girlfriend's family when they talked about me? I'm not Hispanic or anything. I'm white and was adopted by my parents when I was five. My mum is Mexican so I learned Spanish from her. I'm pretty fluent and I guess that surprises people sometimes because I don't look the part. White, blonde hair, blue eyes, etc. Anyways, I've been with my girlfriend for a while, who is Hispanic. Never mentioned I'm bilingual because the topic was just never brought up. A month ago, her family wanted to meet me since we recently moved in together. We did it through Zoom, safety and all. It was her parents, her grandma because she lives with her parents and her sister. Everyone was welcoming and nice. Her grandma was the first to say something in Spanish and her words surprised me because she was literally so nice talking to me then suddenly switched to saying something else. <laughs> Porque otro guero? <laughs> Which says, why another white boy pretty much. Then she asked when she can set her up with one of her friend's nephews. My girlfriend told her to stop, then her parents did the same. A couple of times during the convo, they switched to Spanish whenever making a comment about me. My girlfriend at least always shut down their criticisms and told them to stop talking like that. To be honest, I didn't say anything because I was curious of what their real thoughts on me were. It kind of sucked that they were freely talking about me right in my face. I finally said something when her mum mentioned my girlfriend told her I was in college and asked what I'm studying. Her dad commented to her grandma in Spanish, ah, no wonder he moved in with her if he's wasting all his money in school. See, the fact that we moved in together seems to be their hang up with me. They're not happy we moved in and think because she works full time and I part time that we did it so I can mooch off her, which isn't even true because we split the bills for everything. So I answered in Spanish, we moved in together because we wanted to take the next step in our relationship and we love each other. Then I answered her mum's question, also added that I have several scholarships that pay for everything, so what I earn goes to living expenses. They all looked panicked and right away apologised a million times for what they said. My girlfriend was shocked too, but she didn't have an issue with what I did and thought the look on their faces was hilarious. She only felt bad that I did know what they were saying all along and apologised. Her sister is telling us what I did was petty and mean because I embarrassed them. That I should have said that I knew Spanish because that was a conversation that I wasn't meant to understand or be a part of. Therefore, it wasn't my business to listen in. It's like I was eavesdropping to her. I get eavesdropping is bad and they wouldn't have said anything if they knew I understood. So I guess I can see where she's coming from. Was I the asshole for not saying anything? Now let's get it straight here. This isn't eavesdropping whatsoever. The conversation was right in front of you and right there and it was bloody rude to do what they did. And I'm so glad you did call them out. I would have loved, loved to have seen their faces. I wish you recorded that Zoom call to just, just see the panic. Although I do find it strange that you got to this point in your relationship and the whole language thing has never came up. You know, if I was, if I had a girlfriend who was Spanish and I knew some Spanish, you'd know I'd be on that. <laughs> But Infallible B says, lol, not the arsehole. Her sister is calling you petty. If what you did is petty, what do you call shit talking someone to their face in another language? It's pretty much the opposite of eavesdropping. They're only mad because they got called out on their bullshit. Don't let it bother you. And 50 miles of elbow room says, not the arsehole. It can't be eavesdropping because the conversation was right out in the open. They are right to be embarrassed, but sister is wrong to pin any blame on you. The fact that their instinct was to apologise right away is a good sign that they're basically decent people though. Jeremy McDowell says, not the arsehole. I wouldn't say you're the arsehole. However, I am confused as how you got to the point of moving in with someone without having mentioned you fluently speak a foreign language. That seems so odd. And yeah, I totally agree with that. But now I'm going to turn it to you guys. What do you guys think of the situation and how would you deal with it? Do you think OP did the right thing by calling him out straight away on the Zoom call? Or do you think he should have waited and brought it up in a different way? 
let us know in the comments below. And now we have an update post from the story, Am I the Arsehole, for telling my boyfriend he's a bad person. Now this story was about um, a guy who got like dental traits for his teeth, like molds of his teeth done, um, and he didn't pay for it in the end because they totally forgot to charge him. Part of the story was saying, you know, the, the receptionist could get in big trouble because they didn't charge and now OP's refusing to, you know, pay for these molds. I'll put a link to this Reddit post in the pinned comments below, so be sure to check that out. Have a read of it if you haven't seen it yet. It's a good one. Um, but now we're going to read the update post. Update, thanks for the awards as a lot has happened since my original post. I spoke to the manager of the dental practice. I explained that my boyfriend BF had been open to me about not paying and he doesn't plan to. The manager said a letter was already on the way demanding the payment and if boyfriend fails to pay then court proceedings will begin. He was thankful I called and knew it was their mistake but was surprised at my boyfriend's attempts to argue with him. That's a good result for now. I didn't plan on telling my boyfriend as I wanted to end it. There's been too many red flags, so I couldn't ever truly trust him. And I didn't want to add fuel to the fire. But before I got to end our relationship in person, I learned another painful lesson. Recently, my boyfriend's laptop broke. This was fine as it was old and he can't work from home anyway. He sells cars, so he used mine. Earlier this week, I'm on my laptop working and I go to check my personal emails. Except my boyfriend's email was still logged in when I opened the web page. I go to log out but saw the most recent 30-ish emails were all from the same person, a girl. This was weird as who emails like that to converse anymore? I know it was an invasion of privacy but I clicked onto the emails. I deduced this was a girl from his work. They were emailing because her mobile phone was broken and were emailing from her work email during the day was easy way for them to still talk. The emails were flirtatious. They mentioned dates they'd been on. He'd clearly been to her house. They spent lunch breaks together and she thought he was single. The more I read, the more enraged I became. What if I'd never clicked the email? After considering where I could bury him, I decided to remain calm. I called my manager to tell her what I'd just learned. She's super cool and she said to take the afternoon. I then called an emergency locksmith and packed up my boyfriend's stuff. He alternates between staying at mine and his mum's, except for his PS5 I bought for his 25th birthday last month. When this purge of my boyfriend from my life was ready, I text him. I know about S, our relationship is over, your things are on the doorstep, you must transfer me the money for XYZ, please don't ever contact me again, and blocked him on everything. 20 minutes later, a barrage of knocks at my door as he's pleading to be let in to talk about it. I see him but stay silent where he can't see me. He was on his knees, crying, begging, pleading for me not to leave him. Whether they were crocodile tears or not, my heart ached. After some time he left with his stuff, I felt relief and had a good cry, but I doubt that's the last I hear from him. I feel heartbroken and stupid and an enormous thank you to all those who said his behavior was revealing of his character slash what he's capable of. I would apply the same vigilance to future partners. I know this is a dodge bullet, but it hurts like hell. Edit, just wanted to clarify some things. I kicked him out of my house. I own it. He's never paid anything towards it and has no documentation linking him to my house. He alternates between staying at mine and his mother's, with his mother's being his official and primary residency. Weirdly, some of you are really focused on the fact that I kept the PS5, but I paid for it, have the receipts, and it never left my home. I feel like retracting this gift he's had a little over a week as an arsehole tax is morally justified as he's been a five-star arsehole. I think there'd be very different comments if this was the other way around and he'd just given an engagement ring and then found out I was cheating not even two weeks later under the jurisdiction of a gift, but is it morally right that I get to keep the ring? Probably not. Get the sense half the comments came from the fact that the console is hard to find at the moment, but I just pre-ordered it like everyone else who got one. Some are interested in whether I'm selling it. I'm undecided, but on top of everything, my ex owes me a sizable amount of money, so it depends on whether he decides to be an arsehole with a cherry on top and not pay me back. I noted down the email of the girl my ex was cheating with in case I wanted to contact her directly. I was thinking of constructing a message explaining everything and assuring her I'm not bitter towards her. Then it's up to her what she wants to do with that info. Thanks so much for all the supportive messages and comments. I'm reading every single one. I'm honestly shocked at the amount of kindness from total strangers. Now, I'm going to turn this one to you guys again. What do you think about it? It had a real big twist in there as well after she left him and he's cheating as well. So yes, she definitely dodged a bullet on this one. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. And our next story is from Doing Them Dishes. Am I the arsehole for not cleaning while I cook just to prove a point to my husband? 
I've always cleaned as I cook, so that when it gets to the end of the meal, there's minimal mess. My husband is the opposite. When he cooks, it's like a bomb went off. I've encouraged him to clean as he cooks, and if we're doing a pretty big meal slash holiday meal together, I often make sure to assign him that role. Like most people, one of us cooks, the other one cleans up. I am a better cook, so I cook like 80% of the time. He gets an easy clean up. I'm busier than usual at work, so he's had to step up. Whenever he's done, the kitchen is a mess. I don't even get how it happens. There will be oil splatters untouched, stuff drying to dishes, peels and meat. I'm not about to let food sit overnight, so after I'm done eating, I start the process and won't get to relax much. Last week, I asked if he could try cleaning as he cooks. He told me, the rule is one person cooks, the other person cleans. I said, I get that, but you're leaving me with a huge mess every night. He said, I just don't have time to clean up when I'm focused on cooking. Knowing full well, I'll see him scrolling on his phone. I just got so fed up, so on Sunday, I made a big pot of chili. I didn't clean up as I worked. When I was done, I served him, sat down, enjoyed a beer and dinner. When he finally went into the kitchen, he said, What the fuck? Why is there such a mess? I said I was too busy paying attention to the chili to clean up. I started to get ready for bed. He was like, uh, so you're just going to leave this here? And I said, yes. And he said he would have to wake up extra early to clean up and that he had to be at work earlier than usual when supposed to go play a game with his friend later that night. So could I just clean up? I said, no, I cooked, so he has to clean. Two days later, he's still pissy with me because he ended up not being able to game and told me that he didn't get enough sleep and was exhausted at work. Not to be too snarky, but it's not like he's a surgeon because I had to prove a point to him. I told him that nothing else seemed to get his attention and I feel pretty justified. He told me I was being a smug arsehole and it was childish. Am I the arsehole or is he? And there's a couple of updates which we will read after the comments, but Blueed says, not the arsehole. In my opinion, the whole I cook you clean should only be applicable when the one who cooks also cleans along the way and the one who cleans does the dishes, etc. after dinner. It does not work when someone takes advantage and leaves the entire mess for the other to clean up. It sounds like you tried to ask him multiple times and were considerate and he did not listen. In my opinion, you did nothing wrong. You just did what he expected you to tolerate from him. Hope this is a wake up call for him. He cannot treat you like his maid just because he can't clean up his own damn mess. Good for you for standing up. And D Logo says, given that you did communicate and he had chosen not to listen, it's a not the arsehole. You do need to follow up this with a heart to heart so that he understands this is how you feel every night he cooks. I would also suggest you try cleaning up together. Marriage is a team effort and I think this makes a good team project. Many couples find that clean up together works well for them and you may find it works better for you than your current system. And Kvetch says, not the arsehole, he really needed to see that by cleaning a bit as you cook, you were saving him a lot of time cleaning. His one time inconvenience of you not doing so is what you experience every single time he cooks. To be honest, I think he needs a few more times cleaning it all up to get him to understand since he is throwing a tantrum rather than realizing he's been doing this to you repeatedly. And here was the edits from that post. A couple of you asked how we make so many dishes. It should take 15 minutes, etc. We don't have a dishwasher, there's no room for one, so everything has to be done by hand. Additionally, doing the dishes means cleaning up the counters and stovetop and sweeping the floor, taking out the trash if need be. When I make chili, it's a process of starting with dried chilies that I toast, soak, seed, pulverize, etc. Then cook the dry beans. Then there's the onions, garlic and peels and other veggies, seeding tomatoes, cans of tomatoes, grinding the spices, etc. Then there's grating cheese for the top, etc. It definitely left a ton of dishes and other stuff behind. Edit 2. Sorry guys, I was reading the comments as I was at work. I thought this would get like 10 comments tops. So another thing that comes up, whoever cooks cleans. But since I cook most of the time, I don't see that as being also fair to me. I'll end up spending almost every single day after work. I've been ending work at six or seven some days lately and cooking and cleaning. If I had him cook more, I would definitely start to gain weight. Then we'd have another issue altogether, lol. And final edit, thanks for all the feedback everyone. And oh, sorry for the people on the am I the angel for the humble braggy way I mention I make chili. Don't mean to make you guys feel inferior because I toasted a few chilies, lol. Oh, and it's so fishy because she uses dried beans. Makes sense why people are asking for the recipe if the concept of toasting chilies and dried beans is so novel. <laughs> lol. <laughs> now, I'm going to turn it to you guys. What do you guys think of this situation? And do you guys have your own system in place? Do you want to cook, want to clean, or do you have a different system? Let us know in the comments below. And our next story is from a deleted account. 
Am I the asshole for how I responded to a senior HR member accusing me of taking drugs at work? Background, I have diagnosed bipolar disorder. I've been on medication over a year and it's the best damn decision I've ever made. That being said, I have a tendency to go off my meds when I'm manic. It's not fun when the meds wean out of my system and I go nuts. In order to not sabotage myself, I take my meds every day at 11am. It helps me settle myself for the rest of the day and keeps me on a strict schedule. Incident, my workplace has shifted online fully. We have a Zoom call yesterday with HR to update everybody on COVID measures going forward for the upcoming quarter. And it was about 30 or so people on the call. HR has been anal rentative about people keeping their videos on throughout the meeting. Nobody is allowed to move out of screen. The meeting began at 9 a.m. 11 a.m. comes around and my alarm buzzes to remind me about the medication. I moved slightly out of frame and took them while still on the call. I didn't think anybody noticed, but apparently the senior HR person, we're called Q, did. The meeting wraps up about 12 noon, as we're all getting ready to sign off. Q tells me to stay behind after everybody leaves in front of them. I found that unprofessional but held my tongue. Q then launched onto this long diatribe about how I'm setting a hostile work environment by taking my meds during work hours and that I'm being neglectful of my duties and that I'm ruining my body with them. When I finally got a chance to respond, I said that the drugs I'm taking are prescription medication and that I failed to see how the five seconds it takes me to take them is creating a hostile work environment. I said that my medical history is none of their business and since they have failed to demonstrate any real harm in this situation, I didn't feel like this discussion was warranted. Q looked like they'd swallowed sour milk and told me they'd be writing me up and that I was officially being warned for my behaviour. I saw red and right after the call ended, sent an email to the head of HR. Ah, summarising the conversation and refuting the warning slash write-ups. I stated that relevant legal protections are accorded to employees in such situations and that I hope R would address this fairly. R looked into the matter and I learned later Q had been suspended without pay. A bunch of my co-workers caught on to what happened and are now making it very difficult to work with them. Apparently Q was a popular person in the office and they felt that complaining to the head of HR was taking it too far. This entire situation feels utterly surreal and I can't think of any reason why I'd be the arsehole but I'm facing an uncomfortable work situation and I want to know if I need to apologise and smooth things over. Now you can't be the arsehole in this situation. You know, one, they called you out in, after a meeting and you know, the whole meeting to begin with, how long was you there for? Three or four hours sitting there in front of a screen and you can't go off the screen? That is ridiculous. And is that without a break too? They didn't give you toilet breaks and they expect you to just sit there and suck that up. I think there's a maximum amount of time they're allowed you to be sitting at your desk without, without you actually taking a break. So yeah, I bring that up as well. Q was totally out of line in this situation and needed to, yeah, needed complaining about. It's not your fault that they behaved in such a shitty way. Absolutely not the arsehole in this case, but Max advice says if Q had behaved appropriately, they would have never have gotten suspended. It's probably worth noting that the higher ups that this report got spread, which is creating a hostile work environment for you. Not the arsehole. Jurev says not the arsehole. Q was shockingly unprofessional and out of line. Actually surprised they got suspended though, but I think I'm just used to shitty HR departments not doing anything. Also a hostile work environment is an HR member calling you out to talk privately in front of your co-workers. And Cajun KC says, not the arsehole, unbelievable. You did the right thing. It wasn't Q's soapbox to get on and it doesn't matter what the medication was for. If it was a prescribed medication meant to be taken at a certain time, that's all Q needs to know. And frankly, Q doesn't even need to know that much. Replace bipolar disorder with any other medical condition, diabetes, heart condition, and it's just outrageous behavior. And Polly says, let's be real. They said they were gonna fuck you over. You fucked them over first. That's not an asshole move. That's an Uno reverse and they had it coming. <laughs> I love the Uno reverse. And Dogstar says, not the arsehole, you have to protect yourself from Q, who sounds like they're very unsuited for their job. It seems apparent they have some personal biases with a wrecking your body comment. And if these biases might be something to do with their religious beliefs, overriding your medical needs, you've actually done everyone that has to work with them a favor. I don't really understand how everyone else found out about these details here. This should have been all handled confidentially. And if Q is the one who told everyone what happened, they should be fired. If you told everyone what happened, that might have been a mistake, although it probably seemed like the natural thing to do as Q made it obvious something happened between you. Hopefully it'll blow over soon. The idea of having to be on camera non-stop for two hours is ridiculous anyway. What happened when someone has to go to the bathroom? But that's another topic. Anyway, maybe Q will quit. 
Now, I'm going to turn it to you guys. What would you do in this situation? Do you think like OP was right to take it to HR? Or do you think they should have dealt with it in a different way? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Now, once again, guys, thank you for being here today. I hope you have enjoyed today's stories. And if you have, you know what to do. Hit that like, that subscribe, and maybe that notification bell too. We are approaching Christmas now, you know, and I hope you've done all your Christmas shopping. <laughs> I've still got a couple of bits to do. I've got to rush out today and get some stuff done or I'm in deep shit. <laughs> anyway, much love to you guys. I hope you're having a great time so far. You know, if you've got any friends or anyone that you think that might be lonely over this Christmas period, you know, and you just a text message might help them out. Do what you can to help them. You, you will make a huge difference in their life. Be the friend that you want and, and just do that little thing if you can. And I'm not sure where that came from. It was just in my head from last night. I saw it on TV and I thought, yeah, that is a nice thing to do. I'll be texting a couple of friends myself today just to get involved and see how they're doing. And, you know, if I can help in any way, you know, with the COVID measures in mind, of course. <laughs> Thank you so, so much for being here today. And I hope to see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Much love to you and have a great day now. Bye bye.